want to share with you, yeah, in your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch in our streets, we're touching hearts and changing. I would just like to say welcome everyone went to One Church Ministries, second our home gathering, where our uh episodic overseers is Pastor Shannon Young and Prophetess Nadija Young. And uh I'm your campus minister here. I'm uh Minister Henry Jackson. So you were going going to uh, get into a reading our scripture and I'll be reading from from scripture, reading scripture, I'm going to read it from Psalms 23. And I'll read it for the voice translation. And it says, The Eternal is my shepherd. He cares for me always. He provides me rest in rich green fields beside streams of refreshing water. He smooths my fears. He makes me whole again. Steer me off worn, hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name. See, even in the unending shadows of death's darkness, I am not overcome by fear because you are with me in those dark moments. Near with your protection and guidance, I am comforted. You spread out a table before me, provisions in the midst of attack from my enemies. You care for all my needs. Anoint my head with soothing, fragrant oil, filling my cup again and again with your grace. Certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go, always, everywhere. I will always be with the eternal in your home, in your house forever. Yeah, I just read you Psalms 23, one through six. So let the word have a, a blessing upon this word. Uh, now we're gonna go into prayer. So, uh, bow your heads. Well, dear Heavenly Father, yeah, we do come to you thoroughly to your throne of grace, boldly to your throne of grace. And Jesus, yeah, we're asking for, for, for your forgiveness for any sin that which we have committed throughout this week. And Father, uh, give us, put us in the right mind, in the right spirit. Help us to make the right choices for our lives. Uh, in any which wrong turns that we choose to make. Jesus said we ask that you redirect us, we guide us into our narrow pathways so then we could be once again reconnected with you. Heavenly Father, I do pray that you heal the sick, that you give sight to the blind, that you give knowledge to the ignorant, and that you also help those uh, who are in need of help. You give food to those who are hungry, or water to those who are dying of thirst. And we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the blood that you shed for our, for us. And we gladly appreciate you and everything that you've done. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Just say in Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so now we're gonna go into praise and worship. So I wanna know who loves my Jesus. I wanna know 
loves my Lord. I want to know who loves my Jesus. I want to know who loves my Lord. Say, I want to know who loves my Jesus. I want to know who loves my Lord. I want to know who loves my Jesus. I want to know who loves my Lord. Now I'll sing one more song. Lord, you have now given us a spirit of fear. But the Lord has given us a power. Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. But the Lord has given us power, power in love, power in seek. In your happiness, you has given us a sound mind. Power in love, power in peace, power in happiness, you has given us a sound mind. Brother, should I be afraid? Never should I be afraid. Stir up the gift. Yeah, yeah, that was an old song of mine that um I remember singing when I was a, a kid inside of the side of our mass choir at our church. So um, you know, I thank the Lord for those two wonderful songs, and so they were gonna go into testimony. Heavenly Father, y'all yeah, like to give my testimony for thanking the Lord for putting me in my right mind. For, for allowing me to have great health. Uh, thank the Lord for allowing me to see the age of 37. I'm looking forward to 38 as well. But uh, also thank the Lord for uh, blessing my mother, um, for, for allowing her to still be alive. Thank you for blessing my grandmother for allowing her to be alive. Um, my friends and family as well. Um, I thank the Lord for giving them also food to eat, uh, a place for them to stay, and so forth and so on. Um, I thank the Lord for my spiritual family for uh, blessing me with them, as well as my church family. Um, yeah, I thank every each one of them for being in my life and for, I want to say, uh, keeping me steadfast. So... Yeah, I'm uh, truly thankful. Yeah, I think we're uh, here for the actual main event right now, right? Which will be the the sermon. So, yeah, I do have a word for you. First time you 17, verse 31 through 39 read, When news of David, valiant words reached the king, Saul sent for young David. So David said to Saul in verse 32, Don't let, don't let anyone be frightened because of that man. I am your servant and I will go and fight with him. King Saul responded, Don't be ridiculous. So you can't fight that Phil the Philistine. So you're only a youth, and he has been a warrior since his childhood. So you lack age and experience. Verse 34 reads, and David responded back and said that I work as a shepherd for my father. Whenever a lion or a bear has come and attacked one of my lambs, I have gone after it 
and struck it down to rescue the lamb from the predator's mouth. If it turned to attack me, I would take it by the chin, beat it, and kill it. I have killed both a lion and a bear. And as your servant, I will kill this uncircumcised Philistine too, since he has dared to taunt the armies of the living God. The eternal, verse 37 read, the eternal one who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul responded and said, go then. And may the eternal one be with you. Verse 38 reads, So Saul outfitted David in the king's own armor, a bronze helmet to protect his head, and a coat of mail to protect his chest. Verse 39 reads, David strapped on Saul's sword outside the armor and then discovered that he could not move because he was not used to the restrictions of the weighty armor. So David respond while having it on saying, I'm not used to these things. How can I attack a, a enemy when I can't even walk? So he removed every bit of Saul's armor. He will fight the Philistine as he had fought those lions and bears. So here we see uh, David um, is, a, is a warrior. And so David was responding to the Lord by coming to come a uh, report to King Saul. And so as he's coming to report to his king, his leader, um, he was... Uh, basically, what 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 we wanted to do the Lord's work by fighting for His, you know, army. Right along with King Saul, and so here King Saul, as a leader, what he did was was he well, he he did the thing that he was made to do as a leader, and that's to see what it is that his servant needed and provided those things which he assumed that he needed. So as he go out, he give David this armor, and David puts on the armor. And then, then that's when David, you know, even though that he may have accepted it from his leader, or he may like it, the the armor and everything, but but the one thing that that was unsure here is the fact that he just didn't know how to. A fight with it and so there and so with him putting on this new armor this is something that he was on a set unfamiliar with and so that is what the scripture that's what the sermon is unfamiliar uh, arity and so some of us may like the upgrade or, or we may want a new thing and we're not failing to understand that uh, getting a new thing is going to, uh, I want to say, cost us, which you might have to relearn some things. And so the, the way how David was used to fighting, it was with a slingshot and some rocks. And so that's how he knew how to fight. And he also said he fought with his bare hands. But now he's going from that into expecting to fight with armor and with a shield on his head and and a, a armor well uh, uh, I want to say a, a armor on his chest and a sword inside of his hands and so now I want to read to you what what the word uh, unfamiliarity means and, and there's two definitions here and it says unfamiliarity is the quality of not being known or recognize the, the second definition is uh, unfamiliarity is lack of knowledge or experience 
of something. And so here, yeah, I think the, the second one falls in line with, with David here. And so it, it, it was the lack of knowledge and the experience of him fighting with this new gear. And so as he put it on, he said that he can't fight with it. It's because this is something that he's uh, unfamiliar with. And so some of us may may, may have to understand that uh, getting something new may be exciting, right? But we have to know how to use it. Yeah, so, so you may want a house, right? But you've been so familiar with you uh, moving from apartment to apartment. And you're so used to already having some of your uh, utilities already paid for, you know, like water and and electricity and so forth, and and maybe the the trash. Maybe you get uh, that 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 is probably included in that. So you may have a gated community where you have you know um where security, so so you don't have to worry about. You know that that part too much, but but you're going from uh, going inside of an apartment to moving into a home, and so a home may give give you more freedom, right? And so you no, know, you don't have to deal with neighbors or any of that thing, but you need to understand when you move from an apartment to a home, you got to know about that. You know, even though you may be paying rent on the home. And you still have to pay for your own water, your own electricity, and so so many other factors that goes into a home. And and not only that, see if I'm not, not mistaken, I think you need to get a, a rent a rental insurance. And I'm not sure if that's for both. I think the apartment and the home need both rental insurance. But I know for a home, I don't know if it's when you buy a home that you want to yeah, yeah I know I think if you buy a home then you're going to be looking at paying almost say at property taxes so this here is a keyboard that actually plays sound and so it can record uh, edit mix uh, with some pose and it can also help me to uh, create a uh, chords and so which I'm not good at now, however even though this can do all of this this is because all everything is packed inside this keyboard then I have like a, a only one type of thing this can also do the same thing that the keyboard can do and so even though I can create music on here this is actually what I'm familiar with and so with David here, right, um, young David was familiar with the slingshot. And so th this is, you know, my slingshot where I know how to what's it, uh, create music. I can make sounds. I can do basically everything that the keyboard can do on here. Now, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. But however, what I am stating here is, you know, stick with what you're uh, yeah, familiar with and don't allow people to move you out of your comfort zone. All right. Yeah. Until, yeah, until you and the Lord have established that it's time for you but to move forward. Y'all do hope that that has that the word has blessed you. So I'm going to read these sevenfold blessings. I speak blessings of one, health for you and your family. Number two, I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits you have in your life. Number three, I speak blessings of peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. Number five, I speak blessings of comfort 
to any person that is hurting, that is lonely, that is a bereaving, or that is confused. Number six, I speak blessings of finances, a debt cancellation, uh, of prosperity, uh, economic empowerment to all of God's people according to his riches and glory. And number seven, I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your excitement, to move forward in your purpose. So, um, now I would like to uh, end this off with the uh, benediction speech. If you uh, do have your book, then you, you can follow me at Numbers. Uh, Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, 25, and 26. And I will be reading from the uh, message translation. So it reads, say, and so it reads, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God smile on you. May God gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper.